continue. Let's continue this series that I've been in. Uh, I think this is number five. Number five, whatever happened uh, to the Holy Spirit today, the sealing work uh, of the Holy Spirit. I think for some of you, I'll say 25%, so that's what statistics say. For some of you, this will be one of the most encouraging and hope-giving uh, uh, lessons. Because this is about assurance and security of relationship with, uh, with Christ. Uh, part of the seeding work uh, of the Holy Spirit. So I really think this will be uh, helpful to some of you. And my guess is, if you stop and think, if you've had those spiritual conversations with others, you probably are going to know uh, a family or friends or co-workers who struggle with this security uh, of their relationship with God in Christ, and they're just kind of not sure uh, whether uh, if they were to die today, they'd go to heaven or, or not. So this could really be a helpful lesson, not just for you, but for some others perhaps in your circle of uh, relationships. Uh, a little bit of review. We'll start out with a couple weeks on uh, who the Holy Spirit is, and perhaps the most important thing, a promised helper and a person. Uh, all the attributes of personhood just missing the body, and the uh, body is, uh, takes up uh, residence in us when we come to faith in Christ. And then once we, uh, once we say yes to Jesus, there are a number of, of, of works, activities, ministry, whatever you call it, of the Holy Spirit immediately when we say yes to Jesus. Immediately at salvation. Uh, does He come to indwell us? Does He come and go? He comes, we have all of Him because He is a, a person. And then he bab uh, Christ baptizes us with Him uh, to uh, 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 really, to, as it were, to uh, uh, verify as it were, our relationship with Christ. And then today uh, is uh, so helpful is the sealing work uh, of, the, of the Holy Spirit and what that, uh, what that uh, means. There are uh, only three passages that speak to the city word of the Holy Spirit. I want to look at those. Uh, I think I just gave you the reference. But look at these three verses. Uh, uh, two are out of Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus and one out of his uh, letter to the uh, church in, uh, in, uh, in Corinth. But these are the only three times that this sealing work of the Holy Spirit uh, is mentioned. Let me, uh, let me uh, read those. And then I, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the importance, as it were, of uh, security and, and, and assurance. Paul writes, In Him, that would be in Christ, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in Him, were sealed. We're sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until we acquire possession, really kind of full possession of it, to the praise of His glory. And then uh, further on in the epistle, uh, Paul says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption, of final redemption and full salvation. And then, for it is God, in 2 Corinthians 1, for it is God who establishes us with you in Christ, and has anointed us, and who has also put His seal on us, given us His Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Uh, uh, if you've got a Bible or device, turn to uh, 1 uh, John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. And I'm going to read verses 11 to uh, uh, 13. And this is the message, the testimony. Uh, uh, the idea there is, 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 uh, uh, is the idea of certainty. Okay, That God gave us eternal life. Eternal life not just uh, uh, future, but it's also present. There's a quality and there's a word, quality of life related uh, to the life of God in, in, in us. And this life, this eternal life, this full abundant life, is in His Son, in relationship with His Son. He who has the Son is in a relationship, has life, spiritual life, the life of God in them. He who has not the Son has not the life. I write this to you, says John, I am writing this to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may hope you have eternal life. <laughs> that you may wonder. You may as long as you behave. 
No, it's a statement of fact that you may know uh, for certain uh, that you have eternal life. God, God wants us to know what He already knows. That those who are in relationship with Him through His Son have the gift of eternal life. We didn't do anything to earn it, to deserve it, to merit it. It was an all an act of His mercy and grace uh, on, uh, on, uh, on our behalf because of our fallen and sinful condition. And we come into relationship with Him. And since we didn't do anything to earn it, then once we receive it, we can't do anything to lose it. Because the hardest work for God is not in keeping us saved, but in getting us saved in the first place. Once He's done the, the farmer in the first place, then keeping us in that condition is easier for Him. It's a lesser work uh, that, uh, that you, know, you might say. So, I believe, and this is not something that I've uh, struggled with uh, much, I believe the next best thing to having salvation is enjoying the security of it. I can't imagine anything more paralyzing than not being sure. Somewhere, Barna says, and he does the best research, I think, uh, in evangelical circles, Barna says 65% of evangelical Christians at some point doubt their salvation. Almost two-thirds. He goes on his research to say and about 25% that's reason that was the number I said a moment ago about 25% of evangelical Christians continue to struggle with it. So that's why I would say that uh, uh, you know, if the research is right, it probably is, close enough, that it's, it's, it's reasonable for me to believe in teaching this morning that I'm talking to about 25% of the people in the room, and you may never admit this, are struggling with the certainty of your relationship with God. Even though, as it were, in the past, you uh, trusted Christ and uh, followed in baptism and... and uh, did all the things that, that more or less bring, but kind of proved the evidence of faith, you still struggle uh, with the assurance of your salvation, which paralyzes you. What happens when we struggle with this certainty of our salvation? We will become, and this is proven statistically, we will become less faithful in attending worship. We will become less faithful in praying. We will not read our Bible as much. We will try to avoid spiritual conversations because if I'm not sure, I'm not, I'm not wanting to engage in any of those things, and if I'm unsure, then why would I? Why would I waste my time if I'm not sure. So this lack of certainty of our relationship with God truly impacts our lives. And knowing that in a group of you know 200 250 people and uh, you know 25 percent, that's you know that's a number of people that are in the room that are struggling with this. That's reason I said I'm hoping that today's uh, lesson will really bring those of you struggling with that a great sense of encouragement and hope that God wants you to know what He already knows. That when you come into a relationship with His Son, it is settled. It is secure. It is forever. It's not based on how we live, act, and behave. Because it wasn't in the first place. It was all act of grace and mercy. So that's why one of the works of the Holy Spirit at 
conversion, which we'll see in a minute, is the sealing or the securing of a believer's eternity. And that's what these three references to the sealing work of the Holy Spirit are all about. Okay? With me? Really important. All right, so uh, take your outline and let's just kind of begin to uh, walk through uh, the outline that, uh, that, that I put there in front of you. And hopefully it will be uh, helpful to you. First of all, we're going to go right back to a lot of these texts. The people who are sealed. Who are sealed and secured uh, by the person, by the work of the Holy Spirit. Look, in Ephesians 1.13, which I read earlier, in Him, in Him, in Christ, you also, notice what he says, when you hear the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and believe. You hear and believe. You hear and believe. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 22, who has put his seal on us and given, given. It's looking, it's looking, it's looking uh, 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 back in the past. Who are sealed by the promised Holy Spirit? Every one of us who've trusted Him as our Savior. Say, have you done that? You have. And I've, I've, I've shared with you my testimony in here. For me, it was a process over about a decade. Okay? Uh, I, uh, I prayed to receive Jesus a number of times because I just didn't feel it was sticking. Okay? I just didn't feel like my, fa my faith was very velcro Okay? And hung on. Again, the issue was, on, was more on, on my part because uh, 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 result-oriented, action-oriented, project-oriented, get-it-done-oriented, performance-oriented, that's me, which is also perhaps some of you that are in the room as, uh, as, uh, as well. There was just simply no way that I could come into a relationship with Almighty God and not have to do something. It just it, did, it made no sense to me. Surely something this wonderful and the greatest gift offered, surely I have to do something to get it and to keep it. So I would trust Jesus, okay? Then I'd sin, then I'd go back and I'd trust Jesus again. Okay? Well, how many times did you do that? Well, you need to know how often I sin. Okay, so it was a lot. And when you look back from the time I was, uh, for, for about a decade in there, uh, I, I, was, I, I was struggling with this. Uh, and I would say still now as a performance oriented uh, believer, uh, I don't struggle with the assurance, I struggle with the fact that am I living up to his expectations. And uh, so and I think some of you identify with you know, what I'm testifying here. So the persons who are sealed are anyone and everyone who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Okay? And if you've done that, you've got to do your best to rest in it. And if you did that, many of you may have done that years ago. And here's the danger, is that sometimes you want to look back on an experience uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 years later, which is hard to remember, okay, and you want to look back on that experience as a child or a teenager or perhaps even a young adult. And now years later down the road, you're trying to, you're trying to look back on an experience when, you only, when your information was much less limited and mature than it is now. And you're trying to take what you now know in Christ as a result of some degree of growth through the years and trying to superimpose that on where you were back 10, 20, 30, and 40 years ago. And coming to the conclusion, well, I certainly know a whole lot more and I'm a whole lot more mature now than I was then, so maybe back then that wasn't valid. The only thing we're responsible for is to trust Him for what we know about Him at the moment of salvation. He doesn't expect us to be trained theologians. And that's good. Okay? It's a matter of me willing to trust all that I am uh, in my sinfulness to all that He is in His grace. It's not a matter of what I, about what I know, it's a matter about who I know. And that's relationship with Him. So all of us, if we have trusted Christ at some point in our journey, okay, then we have to realize we're the ones who've been sealed. When did that take place? What's the point, or the time of it? When we believe. I mean, it's not hard. When we believed that we were sinners that needed a Savior. When, whenever that was, you may not be able to look back to a specific time, place, or point. It may have been a season, it may have been a process, I, I don't know. But looking back on that, it's all in the past. When has given us his seal. All that's past. 
And it happens at the point of when you and I say yes to Christ. It doesn't come uh, later. Okay? Eternal security, frankly, is a phrase looking at it from God's perspective that he knows for sure. Assurance of salvation is a little bit more from the human perspective, but am I assured of that security? The security from God's direction is, is, is clear. Where we struggle is from the human perspective. Okay? And that's the reason I said God wants us to know what He already knows. And that if we trust in His Son, we're His. We not only got Him, He got us. And if He can't hold on to us, then probably that first commitment doesn't matter. But He can. But He can. So important. So important. Uh, three, the person who seals us I don't want to label there, but the person who seals us is God sealing us with the person of the Holy Spirit. We don't have to earn it, pray for it, seek it, or deserve it. We just got to confess our sins and trust Jesus. That's it. That's it. Uh, one of my favorite theologians who passed away is a fellow that was uh, president of a uh, uh, professor been years, uh, for years president at uh, uh, one of our really fine conservative seminaries, uh, Dallas Theological Seminary. Uh, uh, John Walverd, a uh, great writer, great, said all the passages make clear that the act of sealing is accomplished entirely by God. Didn't do anything to earn it, didn't do anything to deserve it, didn't do anything to lose it. It's never given in the form of an exhortation, you know, please, please be sealed, or pictured as a goal which Christians should strive for. Rather, it is a gracious act by God for those who be saved. It, it, it's, it's grace. It's, it's mercy, unearned, undeserved, given to those who say yes to His Son at salvation. Alright? Now, the heart of what I want to deal with this morning is has to do with what are the purposes? Why does God do this? What does it mean? What does it, what does it signify when you and I put our faith and trust in Christ and, and we are sealed by His promised Holy Spirit? What does that mean and how does that provide uh, security and assurance of my salvation? That's where I want to spend the bulk of my time. And there are a number of, uh, of, frankly, purposes. I just kind of narrowed it down to the ones that I thought were the most important. Uh, but there are a number even beyond the ones that, I, that I'm going to, uh, uh, to cover. The first, uh, by the way, each one of these, what I tried to do uh, for every one of them, I, I tried to help you to see normally. When I say normally in your notes, it means if you were and I were in the context where sealing is referred to in the Old Testament or in the New Testament, the three passages, but primarily acts of sealing in the Old Testament, I try to give you some biblical context of how the sealing, uh, uh, how and why the sealing took place. And then I try to give you examples of that. I don't have time to read through all those, but I really want to encourage you to do some of that reading on your own. I think you'll find it uh, to be uh, most helpful. And then I tried to take each of these purposes and, uh, and to kind of put an application on it for you and for me today. So that's what each one of these, I think there are four of them. So that's what I try to do in every one of them. So the first one is the, the sealing signifies or the purpose in the sealing. It, it's a, it is an act of identification or owner. Ship. An act of identification or ownership. Normally, and this is in you know, then and now, when someone owns something, they put their seal on it and said, This is mine. This is mine. Uh, I don't use it anymore because I wore it out. But this was a sealer. Now, uh, you can't see it. Uh, but I have, uh, uh, I stopped because I couldn't keep up with it. Uh, I have about 7,000 books in my library. And uh, uh, early on, I, I purchased this sealer that has my name on it, okay? And I would take, uh, open every book that I purchased, okay? And I would take that heavy page that's right in front, and I would slip it in between uh, this uh, sealer or embosser, and I would pinch it, and I would close that, okay? And, uh, and, uh, uh, and, my, and my name, as it were, fixed. This book belongs to me. Don't you dare take my book, okay? Take my children, take my grandchildren. Do not take my book, okay? And some folks have taken my books over the years. God bless their sins, six, real books, so, okay? And, uh, but 
uh, and I did this for a long time, and in fact I had to pull this out, I had to go search for it because I haven't done it in years because I just simply couldn't keep up uh, with all the books that were uh, growing in, 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 in my library. But it simply was a mark of ownership. A mark of ownership. A mark of identification. Uh, this belongs to the person's name or autograph uh, that was uh, uh, that was uh, uh, that was that, and you see this. Uh, some examples that I gave you: Bible example of the Song of Solomon, uh, uh, the, which is a love letter uh, from a, a lover to his uh, uh, to his uh, sweetheart, and he says, "You're you know, you're my love for you is sealed in my heart. It's in my heart. You own." My heart. It's kind of what he was saying. I can't get into all of these, but so really important. How did that happen? How did that happen? In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit lives in us when we come to trust Christ and dwells us within you, who you have from God. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. I mean, he paid. He paid to sell us and to own us. He has rightful ownership all of us as a result of the gift of His Son. And you see this in a, in a 2 Timothy chapter 2 at verse 19. All of this is said, you and I are owned by God. He purchased us. We faith Him. Uh, uh, we're not only uh, bought by the Son of God, but we're branded by His Spirit. I mean, His seal, His mark of ownership is on us. And that's Secure. Really important. Next is uh, it is the seal marks. Uh, uh, I think I use the word authentication or 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 genuineness. But when you really see a lot of this uh, in uh, in kings, because a lot of times the kings had a, had a had a signet ring. Okay, and everyone knew it was an official document when the seal of the signet uh, ring. Was uh, 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 was present on a document that uh, this is real, this is authentic, this is trustworthy from the king. See a lot of this in the book of uh, in the book of uh, Esther with uh, what's going on with uh, with, the, with the king and, and Mordecai and Haman uh, and the decrees and edicts that were sent forth by the king. They were all sealed with the uh, with the uh, signet ring uh, of the king, and it and it and it gave the document a sense of owner, excuse me, a sense of authority. And genuineness, and you can trust this. What happens? Uh, why do we go to notary republic? Why? To authenticate what? The document or the signature that's on the document. This is the real deal. This is not a fabrication. It's not a phony. This is the real deal. Well, that's what God does to us. Uh, with His Spirit when He seals us. He doesn't just identify as our owner, okay? He marks us as real and true and genuine followers and believers in Him. And that's all His uh, act of His grace and mercy toward us. Again, we haven't earned it or deserved it. It's kind of a divine, as it were, certification uh, as a result of our relationship with God. Third, uh, and this is one of my favorites. I think all of these kind of tie in together and speak of the same truth as security. Is the seal was a mark of protection. And you saw when something was sealed, especially if it was a, if it was a, 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 if the letter or the document was sealed, and then the, uh, the the mark of ownership was on it. It was on. It was it was protected. Uh, only the rightful person can open this and not violate, as it were, uh, the seal. The, the relationship you and I have with God is a seal that guarantees safety and security. That's what he's trying to say here in the passage uh, for all of us. Uh, again, biblical examples, Esther and Daniel. Remember when, uh, remember when Jesus was crucified and died and the Romans took and they buried his body and they rolled the stone over uh, uh, the, uh, the hillside? Anybody remember what the, what the Romans did? They sealed it. They sealed it. And don't violate. Don't break the seal. Uh, in the end time uh, uh, drama, when, uh, uh, when, when Satan is bound in the bottomless pit for a thousand years in the millennial reign of Christ, uh, Satan is bound 
and, and the pit in which he is bound, Revelation 23 says, it is sealed by an act of God. And he can't escape. He's protected in there in the sense and can't get out until God uh, releases him. Now, in Ephesians 1.14, still don't know this protection because it's, uh, I know a lot of folks struggle with this uh, sense of security and assurance. Uh, in uh, 1.14 of Ephesians, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, the Holy Spirit being the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire full possession of it to the praise of His uh, 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 glory. And then in 2 Corinthians 1.22, who has also put His seal on us and given us His Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. The word there, guarantee, is the, is, uh, is the word arabon. A-R-R-A-D-O-N. And it's, uh, it's a word that means deposit. Uh, down payment. Uh, uh, a guarantee. A uh, guarantee. Probably all of us when we uh, uh, either rent an apartment or rent a house or bought a house, we put down a security deposit. Uh, and I know at least in the, in the mortgage market it's called earnest money. Okay? And if you don't follow through, what happens? You eat it, you lose it. Okay? When, when God saved us and sealed us with His Spirit, his Spirit sealing us was God's earnest money. God's down payment. God's pledge that, that I promise you that I will follow through with, with my commitment to you to save you and to keep you saved forever. It doesn't depend on your ability to live for me. It depends on my ability to hold on to you. And He can uh, when, when Linda and I fell in love at some point in our journey in fact I, I uh, came across uh, some time ago when we were going through some old albums uh, man I was a good looking young fellow uh, <laughs> it, it had a picture in our local paper of our engagement okay of our engagement and, uh, and she had an engagement ring. How many of you ladies, you know, uh, uh, got an engagement ring at some point in your journey? You got an engagement ring. Okay? Most of you, okay? Here's what's supposed to happen. Doesn't mean it happens. It's what's supposed to happen. And that is, this guy falls in love with you. He proposes to you. You say yes, and he gives you an engagement ring. What does that mean? It's a promise. It's a promise, honey. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> it's a down payment. It's a pledge. It's earnest money. Now, the fact that most men cannot and do not follow through with that is not a reflection on God. <laughs> That's really important to realize that, okay? It's this guy giving to you a down payment, a pledge, an earnest Honey, I love you. This is just the beginning. I'm going to be true to the end. And when we come to the, to the actual marriage ceremony, I'm going to give you, a, give you a second ring that costs more than the first ring. And this, those are all promises and pledges of what is to come. When we got saved, God said, I seal you with my spirit. But that's only the beginning. I promise you, I promise you of who I am that I will secure you. I will protect you. It's not about your behavior. It's about my power. And there's not anything you can do to get out of the clutches and the grip of my hand. You are sealed. You are written in my palm. And I have you now, and I will have you forever. I'll take care of you. But what if I sin? What do you mean, if? <laughs> <laughs> the question is how many and what kind? <laughs> but He forgave us when we were yet enemies. 
Once we come into a relationship with Christ, we're no longer enemies. We're His sons and daughters and His friends. If God is willing to save me and you and seal you and me by His promised Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit at the moment of salvation when we were fallen, sinful enemies of God, once we become His children, can He not, will He not, is He not able, once we are now in His family, to keep us saved and secure? Of course He can. Of course, and He does. And it doesn't depend on our behaviors. If it does, then it did in the first place. And we did something to earn it because we feel like now we can do something to lose it. No, our faith is not based on what you and I do. It's based on what God did. And His down payment and earnest to that, His pledge to that, is His Holy Spirit indwelling, baptizing, sealing us in our relationship with Him. And a mark that He owns us. That we belong uh, to Him. A mark of, 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 of identification a mark of protection that I will keep you secure no matter what happens. Now, with that, with that comes responsibility. Not to earn. Not to earn. Back in those cultures, when there was a contract or an arrangement or an agreement, there was a ceiling that took place between, as it were, the two parties. Each party had their obligation to fulfill certain responsibilities. In terms of what we're talking about this morning, God fulfilled His end, as it were, of the covenant, okay, by, uh, by, by His grace and permitting us to come into relationship with Him through His Son. God did His part in saving and securing us. He did His part. Now, our responsibility is what? Well, in, in that day, the signet ring, the, the seal, almost always bore an image. And often it was the image of the emperor or the king. Facially, it bore his image. What I see in the sealing is this. Is that when we are sealed, we are sealed with the image that, 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 that was uh, embossed or planted on us, which, the, which is the image of God. And once in His family, you and I bear the responsibility not to stay in His family, but to prove we are owned and in His family. We do everything that we can, not perfectly, to live out the character and the attributes of the one whose image is imprinted on our lives. In attitudes and beliefs and behaviors. To become as much like Jesus as we possibly can. Knowing that we'll never perfectly get there, but we are striving to get there. It's not about perfection, it's about the direction and, uh, and toward Christ likeness. And, and, and it'll be an up and down fashion. I get that. It, at least it is in, 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 in my life. But God has secured us and now our responsibility is to live out His image that's been embossed on our lives through the seeding work of, of the Holy Spirit and the uh, work of, uh, of His Son. What, what a great promise uh, of, uh, of, of assurance in your journey and in my journey. And what's the last question? How... How long? Uh, what's the period of this of this sealing? Well, Ephesians four verse thirty says, "Until we acquire possession or full possession of it, to the praise of His glory." Verse thirty, chapter four: You were sealed until the day of redemption, and it says, "To the praise of His, uh, to the praise of His glory." Uh, a few weeks ago, when I shared my word unfinished. I spent a few minutes in the message un unpacking the subject biblically of salvation. The salvation uh, ha has a past aspect to it. Uh, we, we have been saved. We have been uh, freed from the penalty of sin. And that's past when we trusted Christ. 
You and I now live in the present called sanctification, where you and I are hopefully being more and more confirmed in attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors uh, to, to the image of God and to the character of, of Christ. And that's what's happening in our journey uh, uh, until we uh, die or Jesus comes to, uh, to get us. But there's still a future aspect of salvation, and that's the aspect of glorification after we die, where we, are, uh, where we spend eternity in heaven. And in the past, delivered from the penalty of sin. In the present, uh, we are being delivered from its power and control over our lives. But one day in the future, uh, when we get to heaven, there will be no more sin. There's no more death. There's no more sin. We're finally fully, as it were, redeemed and glorified and like Christ perfectly in attitude, beliefs, and behaviors. So the ceiling, okay, I got that at the moment of salvation, but how long does that last? Yes. Yes. There's no expiration date. Well, as long as I... There's no expiration. Until I die, then I won't... There's no expiration date. The Holy Spirit is His engagement ring, promise and pledge to every one of us who have trusted Christ. You haven't seen anything yet, and I mean it. And no matter how life treats you, you are mine, and when the time comes, either I come to get you or you come to join me, I'm telling you, you will be with me forever. Forever. So, our, and God, God's glory is at stake in this. He's got to follow through. It's not about us following through, it's about Him following through. And He has to because of who He is. So, here's the question. Have you been sealed? Well, if you've trusted Christ. Again, look, this was my verse for, uh, for unfinished. Look at Philippians uh, 1, uh, 1, uh, uh, 1 6. Paul didn't, he didn't doubt, he didn't hesitate, he didn't stutter. He said, I am certain of this. I am sure of this. That he who began a good work in you, God, in, he began that in the past will bring it to completion. He's, listen, it's all, sometimes I feel like I'm running to the finish line without realizing that I'm in the arms of God and He's running me to the finish line. Big difference. Big difference. He promises you'll get there. You'll get there. We can hold on to that. Again, not about our faithfulness, but His. But His faithfulness. So, let me close with this quote. Go back to John Wilbur uh, again uh, to, uh, to close. It's a little lengthy, a couple of slides, but uh, let me read this a quote. Uh, so, I'm sorry, this, our salvation is sealed with God's glory. Is it's not about us, it's about Him. Okay? Look at this quote from uh, John Wilbur. A couple pages, and then we'll take a picture of it because it's really powerful. The point of greatest significance to the sealing of the Holy Spirit is the eternal security of the belief. That's what's important. It is plainly stated that the seal is placed on the Christian with a view to keeping him or her safe until the day of redemption, the time of complete deliverance from all sin. The matter is not left in human hands. It's not dependent on us but it is dependent entirely on the power of God. Entirely. The nature of the seal forbids any possibility of counterfeit, of disallowing of the token, God's not going to be faithful, the person of the Holy Spirit, possessing the Holy Spirit, all the attributes of God, by His presence is a token, a promise of God's abiding grace which could not be accepted. You can't beat it. As God has promised that His Spirit will abide in the believer, so the Spirit Himself, as the seal of our salvation, brings all assurance to the believer's heart. Signed by the blood of Christ, <clears throat> sealed by the promised Holy Spirit, and one day delivered to spend eternity with Him. So, if you're in that 25%, stop listening to Satan's lies. 
greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. <coughs> Believe him and what he says. And the down payment that he gave you and the, and the promised sealing work of the powerful Holy Spirit. We are safe and we are eternally secure if we are in Him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 homework. Next, we, we looked at the, 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 pers- the convicting work of the Holy Spirit with a little bit more, as it were, pre-salvation work of the Holy Spirit building us convict uh, believers of their sin. And then we looked at the baptism and today the sealing. Beginning next time, we're going to move and, and do some of the uh, 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 work of the Holy Spirit that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I've been a student of spiritual gifts for about 35 years. It's always been a favorite subject of, 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 of mine. Uh, there was a time that I only believed that the gifts were given at the moment of salvation. Uh, and that could still very well be true. What gives me a little bit of pause is that having worked with believers for years and helping them to identify and use the gifts that God has given to them, I've just watched more often than not people discover them not at the moment of salvation but many years later. Now, that doesn't mean that they weren't there at the moment of salvation. Very well could have been. Okay, They were just latent just waiting on my life experience and prayer and discovery uh, for them to, uh, uh, to, to burst forth. So this gifting of the Holy Spirit, in, in my view, is probably at the moment of salvation, uh, but maybe it comes, uh, some of it, or maybe additional gifts or something comes later on. I'm not really sure, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is realizing that God has uh, invested in you and in me spiritual capacities and resources uh, that uh, uh, that accompanied with our uh, our uh, 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 surrender to the Holy Spirit, accompanied uh, by uh, life experience, accompanied by our dedication and surrender, accompanied by our willingness to uh, get out there and, and, and to serve, which all of those are really uh, follow us, okay? And that is to find and to discover and to dispense of the spiritual resources and giftedness that God has invested by His Spirit in you and in me. And in me. Uh, so, I, am, uh, I want to help you uh, uh, to uh, know if you don't already uh, what your giftedness is. So, uh, 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 I want you, some of you have done this. Uh, I don't know if there's any need to do it again. Uh, but if you want to, feel free. You can go to my website, jimmynod.com, and go under assessments. And there are two spiritual gift inventories. Uh, uh, w- w- one is mine, and it's really two uh, 99 statement uh, that you respond to. Uh, statements take you about 25, 30 minutes. Uh, I, would, I would encourage you to take it in an uninterrupted time. If you can, okay. And then I'm secondly going to encourage you is your answers are your top of the mind response of this is how I am. The danger in any assessment is sometimes we check where we want to be <laughs> rather than who we are. So just just be who you are, okay. And when you take the 299 uh, uh, statements thing, when you hit submit, it will merge those two and it will give you your gifting from the strongest gifting to the weakest gifting. Okay? And uh, so that's one of the assessments. There's also one on there called gifttest.org, which is uh, very simple, just based on Romans 12 gifts, uh, taking less than 10 minutes to take it. And it will give you a report of the seven uh, gifts that are mentioned in Romans chapter 12. Uh, just those seven. But it can be a little bit of, of a confirming uh, to the other test. Uh, I, I want you to do this if you haven't already. That's free. Uh, and do that because uh, during your discussion time, during your discussion time, one of the questions is going to be, please share with your group your primary giftedness. Okay, and you don't want to go, duh. Okay. Uh, so 
just, uh, you, you, you've got time, don't, don't wait till the last minute. Uh, you know, take you about 25, 30 minutes. And if you've done this, okay, you don't need to do it again. And any of you, and I know you do, you know, I could stop you right now where you're gifting this and you would say the top two or three. You know those already. And uh, so I really want this to be not just a time of understanding of, of, of how uh, the the, uh, uh, the gifts are distributed and by who I really want it to be, uh, or even studying the individual gifts. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I am. I do not believe that the four passages in the New Testament that speak to the spiritual gift uh, uh, issue. I don't believe that Paul or Peter uh, were uh, were uh, attempting to say, and this is the only exhaustive list. I, I, I don't think it was. So, uh, but it's a starter, uh, uh, anyways. And uh, I'm still trying to decide how I'm going to uh, uh, present a wealth of information and knowledge on this to make it helpful and practical uh, to you. But more than anything, I want you to know uh, what yours are uh, to uh, help perhaps name them and label them uh, in your experience. I want you to have the joy, because it is that, to say to the people that you know in your group, that when you get asked, what is it that you do well? What are your primary uh, giftedness? It's something very fulfilling and affirming to say, it's this, this, and this. Okay, it does something for your soul. Okay? Uh, 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 and, and for the energy of your service. I want you to have that. And then I don't mind saying, I'm going to also challenge you because the spiritual gifted matter is not just about discovery. It's more about using. Okay, doing something with it. Okay, so... But I think helping to discover that can get you there. But for right now, let's just get the discovery. Okay? So do that. You can just go to JimmyNod.com, assessments, and you'll find both of those there. There are four passages that speak uh, to the subject of spiritual giftedness. Those are there. Try to read through several times this week. And then for today, before I pray, tidy with the ceiling, there are uh, uh, th uh, three questions. Why do some struggle with the insurance? Okay? I didn't... Embarrass you by saying, Why do you, if you're one of those, what is some? Number two, how sure are you of your salvation? Okay, and number three, which I didn't really even get into, which was intentional because I want you to, uh, uh, to discuss this. Why is assurance, security, uh, salvation, why is this even matter? Why is this important? Okay? All right, let me pray and I'll let you uh, uh, discuss. Father, thank you for uh, the person and the work of your spirit. Thank you for uh, uh, at that moment of salvation, whether it was this morning or whether it was many, many years ago, uh, you showed up in power. You indwelt us by you. Uh, we are your temple. The Holy Spirit resides, indwells, takes up home in us. And we are so honored. And Lord, you, 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 you seal us until that final day of redemption when we're in glory forever with you. And you promise, you promise that we, you own us.